Signed, sealed, and delivered. Online gaming and sports betting on the brink of becoming legal here in Connecticut. This morning, we hear from the state's two federally recognized tribes who are ready to get the games up and running. Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Chair Rodney Butler is back, and we welcome Ray Pino to the, the president and CEO for Mohegan Gaming and Entertainment. They'll join us in a moment. And then declaring racism a public health crisis. That's what a bill given final approval by the legislature would do. But it's more than that, the legislation getting bipartisan support. We break down the bill, what it means, and what actions it takes. With State Representative Brandon McGee, State Senator Saud Anwar, and Republican leader in the Senate, State Senator Kevin Kelly. It's all today on The Real Story. story. I'm Jen Bernstein. It's a historic moment. Connecticut expanding gaming in our state and doing it alongside the state's two federally recognized tribes. The legislature giving online gaming and sports betting the green light. Governor Lamont signing it. The only piece that's left is the Federal Bureau of Indian Affairs signing off because it's an amendment to the compacts between the tribes and the state. Governor Lamont has been saying he is confident the state will be ready to begin offering gaming and sports betting at the start of the upcoming NFL season, which begins in September. But is that timeline realistic? Joining us this morning, Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Chairman Rodney Butler, as well as Ray Pino, President and CEO of Mohegan Gaming and Entertainment. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Jen. Thanks for having us. Appreciate you both coming on. All right, so this really could have gone several different different ways, and it almost did at points. But here we are. We're almost on the finish line. Want your reaction. We want to start with you, Rodney. Well, uh, let me start off by uh, just congratulating Ray on his uh, formal appointment as president and CEO of Mohegan Sun. It's, it's, it's for us. It was a proud moment having our first tribal member. And it's not their first at Mohegan, but it's another long line of successful leaders of tribal members at Mohegan as well. So congratulations to, to Ray on that. Um, you know, Look, it has been an incredible road, Jen, and as you know, and your audience knows, we've been on this show many a time talking about this and speaking optimistically and thinking it's going to happen in every legislative session that's fallen apart. And this one was no different. Uh, there were moments where both sides had to walk away from the table, uh, and it got, uh, it got heated at times, but ultimately everyone came together and realized the bigger prize that was to be had by the state and the tribes and focused in. And, and really, it, when you think about this, it, it's, it's monumental. This is the biggest economic expansion that the state has seen in probably a decade. I mean, going back to the original uh, gaming agreement, there's nothing that's going to contribute more revenue to the state coffers uh, than this new agreement that, uh, that we've come uh, to terms on. So we're very, very excited about it after many years of, uh, of, of wrestling over the deal terms and what's right and what's wrong and who has ownership and who doesn't. We're, we're finally here and ready to submit our, uh, our compacts to uh, the Department of Interior. For yeah, final Rodney, approval. There, there was a moment there where... Mohegan Tribe had made, you know, the agreement and you all had not signed off at that moment and it looked like things were going to fall apart there for a second, but it seemed that you all were able to obviously come to a conclusion with that. Yeah, and I knew we would. And I have, look, anytime you're negotiating with three parties, not everyone's going to agree on everything. And there were moments where uh, the uh, Mohegan and Pequot agreed and the state didn't. There's moments where Pequot and the state agreed and Mohegan didn't. And, um, you know, it, it happened, but it ultimately, uh, we, we figured it out and we came up with a deal that uh, is incredibly, um, uh, it's going to be incredibly successful for all. So, again, it, we're excited. Ray, give us your reaction. Uh, my reaction is this has been a long time in coming and uh, I appreciate the work of the governor and the two tribal leaderships in getting us to this point. Um, we've been on the verge of doing this for, for several years now and to be in this position today uh, feels tremendously um I feel tremendously happy for this to, to be in this position that we can finally see the um, the change in gaming legislation in, in Connecticut. And I think that what has ultimately been resolved and put forth as as a legislation in Connecticut is going to be beneficial for not only our two tribes, but the governor and, and all our communities in the state of Connecticut. All right. So let's talk about the timeline right now, because uh, even if the Bureau of Indian Affairs 
approves this, there's still a lot of logistics behind what needs to happen next, right? So I was reading that the Department of Indian Affairs has 45 days to approve once it's been submitted. Do we know if the changes to the compact has been submitted at this point? Yeah, we, they haven't been submitted yet. Uh, we're coordinating with Mohegan uh, and our legal counsels are speaking with the legal counsel at the Department of Interior um, just to give preliminary review of it. And we're hoping to submit in the coming weeks. Um, but, you know, the 45 days is the max they can go. Uh, they just reviewed uh, compacts that were approved for sports betting in Arizona, and they did those in less than 30 days. And so just because there's a 45 day window doesn't mean it has to take 45 days. It usually takes that if there's some complications, but the early conversations with Interior, we're, uh, we're optimistic that we can get this done, uh, certainly within that time frame. Ray, are you optimistic that we'll get this done at the start of the NFL season? You know, I think that, you know, this is something that, you know, we've been working on for a long time, uh, despite the fact that legislation has only recently been passed. And, I'm, I, you know, I don't want to speak for Rodney and Foxworth, but I'm sure this is something they've been working on in the background um, and something that we've been planning for. Um, we all felt confident that at some point in time this day would come. So we haven't been sitting on our laurels waiting for the legislation to actually happen. We've been working with partners and talking with providers and, and thinking about how we strategically move forward with this. So I think we're both been positioning ourselves to be ready for this day and move forward. Speaking of partners, we know that the Mash and Tucket Pequots have named DraftKings as their uh, sports betting vendor, right? You'll, you'll be using that. Have the Mohegans chosen their sports betting vendor at this point? Uh, we have not as yet. I can tell you that uh, obviously, you know, Connecticut is a tremendously um, sought after market because it has limited capacity or limited participants, I should say. And as such, you know, there are many people that like to enter into this market. If you look at markets like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, we have dozens of people operating. They'd all love to be in Connecticut, which is, a, you know, a, a fantastic state to be in with a decent population, with a good wealth um, and experienced gaming operators. So we've been talking to many potential partners partners and and I'm sure that uh, when the time comes uh, we will be selecting our partners to, to move forward look forward to hearing that all right so will you both be working together on anything or was it just the initial negotiations that you all ha kind of had to come together and everything else is separate well you know we're we're uh, we're cousins first and foremost and 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 tribal nations we have so much in in, in common as far as our, our goals and our initiatives and we actually work together collaboratively on a lot of issues but of course we're competitors as well and so at the core uh between foxwoods and mohegan sun i mean they're battling every single day and ray will tell you that right he's, he's the general over their house so um but but the the broader issues the legislative issues you know we walk arm in arm with our cousins on, a, on an everyday basis and so this is no different than past initiatives that we've done and there'll be more uh in the future i'm certain of that yeah correct me if if i'm wrong about this i, I read the legislation but because it's going to be on your phone or on your computer, are you all going to be competing essentially for people's attention on their phones and stuff, right? Yeah, this will be the classic Foxwoods, Mohegan Sun, you know, battle royale uh, once we get up and running. But uh, up until then, we were on the same page, uh, getting it in place and, and creating, a, as Ray pointed out, this tremendous economy for the state of Connecticut and for both tribes. Off to the races, so they say. Ray, tell Off me, I know race. you both were just kind of talking about this before we started the program. How are the crowds? You know, we just had a couple weeks ago, I think it's only been two weeks in Connecticut, that the mask guidelines had changed. If I remember, Rodney, I think you were still having people wear masks in your casinos. But tell me how the crowds have been. Have you seen an uptick? Do you feel like the feel is coming back? Let's start with Ray. Janet's great question. You know, the last... Uh, 15 months have been an incredibly tumultuous time for, you know, all of us, right? Uh, you know, both our casinos closed for the first time ever over this pandemic, and that, you know, was a very difficult time. You know, we saw some uh, particularly stronger times right after we reopened. Um, we reached the height of the pandemic in the, in the fall, early winter time. I think since January, we've seen a steady return um, to normalcy. I think, you know, we've opened up most of our operations at full capacity. Um, there's still things that remain closed, such as, you know, our buffet and valet still remain closed, and we're still evaluating when's the right time to open them. I do see a sense of optimism from our guests in returning, but I wouldn't say we're back to 100% occupancy. I think we're steadily climbing towards that, and hopefully we continue to see growth. Rodney? 
Yeah, no, I, I, I concur with that. And I got to give a, a shout out to uh, to my CEO, uh, Jason Guyette, who we just made permanent uh, recently as well. And he's done a great job with the, managing the team through the pandemic and making sure that not only the team members feel safe, but that the, the guests feel safe as well. And so as Ray pointed out, there wasn't like, hey, May 19th, lift the mask and it's an explosion of people coming in because of all the work that Jay's put in and Ray has put in, you know, our, our patrons have been comfortable for, for quite some time. Um, and so it was literally as the, the broader numbers in the state started to drop as far as COVID infections, and then the stimulus package came out, you started seeing people come out uh, significantly in the past, uh, in the past few weeks, certainly leading up to the May 19th date, but it's, it's different. I will say I still walk around and I'm like, should I have my mask on? Should I not? I mean, that, that's, I think we're all going through that stage of denial that, that we're really past the, the masking uh, phase. But uh, it is good to see people and see their smiles again and, and having a good time and, and enjoying all that we have to offer at our facilities. I know the feeling. It's like I still walk into stores sometimes and I'm putting on my mask because everyone's wearing theirs still. And I'm like, I don't know. What should we do? So it's it's an adjustment, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Ray Pino with the Mohegans and Rodney Butler with the Mash and Tucket Pequots. Appreciate you both coming on together and talking about this historic gaming legislation. We hope you come back on and keep us updated. Thank, Thank you, Jen. Jen. Appreciate it. All right, coming up on The Real Story, declaring racism a public health crisis. Legislation doing just that is sitting on the governor's desk ready to sign. The bill would ignite a deeper, more involved look at the impacts racial inequities have on public health. The legislation passing with bipartisan support. Ahead, we'll dive into the bill's details with State Representative Brandon McGee, State Senator Saud Anwar, and Republican Senate Leader Kevin Kelly. What does it mean and what will it do? The Real Story, we'll be right back.